I am back with Jessica and Rachel Legath for the much-anticipated episode 3 of How to Show Groom Your American Cocker Spaniel. While Jessica may have learned from her mother and then Rachel from Jessica, everybody adds their own little twist, so hang tight and watch to the end. Aww, she's got a gray. I pluck my own too. <laughs> I can't. Mine are all big. I got lots. That's why I said I went to coloring them all because you're going to learn something new from both of them. Would you like your breed shared with the rest of the BISB family? I am definitely looking forward to working with more handlers and breeders who are willing to share their amazing skills. Hit me up below in the comments section and let me know if you're interested. And by the way, the more merchandise that's sold, the more I get to travel and add more episodes. So thank you in advance for your support. Like and share this video with your friends and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you can ring the little bell and you won't miss one episode. I'm going to start out by telling you in this episode the girls are showcasing their individual grooming styles on two individual dogs. One is an adult and the other is a puppy. So be sure to grab your pen and paper because there's tons of tips crammed into this one. The first step in show grooming your Cocker Spaniel, after bathing and blow drying of course, is brushing out all of that coat. So pull out that safari pin brush with all those little dots on the end. You can just go right through. Okay. So use these for dematting because it's easier on their coat and it goes right in. Jessica classifies the safari to be somewhere between a standard pin brush and a slicker brush. The little balls on the end help divide the hair. The key to this coat is to brush up and then brush down. And this all goes down. And you can totally see the difference already. That's awesome. If you haven't heard it already, there is an actual phrase called a cocker foot. You're going to learn all about it in this episode, I guarantee. But to start out, I'm going to tell you lift up the foot and pull it behind to brush out the bottom. When you're working on the rear leg, don't lift the leg up past the hip. This is for any coated breed. This is for any dog. For the side coat, there is also a special little trick. First, you hold the coat out with your fingers and then you brush through the hair so that you can get fully underneath. Continue brushing down until you have removed all the snags and snarls. Now, before we dive into the nitty gritty, you need to understand there's quite a difference between the adult coat and a puppy coat as with any breed. While we talked about bathing and blow drying a cocker in part two of this series, the coat type definitely follows into part three. And in this episode, we're going to talk about what you do before you get to the show site. Because guess what? Yep, there's more that you actually have to do the day of the show. Like every day that you show. So at the dog shows, we would get them ready by bowl washing their butts and their ears, their front coat. Okay. Um, and then you rinse it. Like after you do the water and shampoo, then you rinse them with just water. Okay. And then um, towel them dry, blow them out, and then you spray them with a, a spray. I make my own spray, but it helps with the moisture. Okay. And then you iron. Oh, okay, so you are going to iron them. All right. You could iron them. They usually stay really good for the day. For the day. And you're going to redo that every day of the mm -hmm. show. Yes. And if you're in a hurry and you can't do it, then a hot dryer will do just as good. After you brush them all out, it's time to get to your trimmer work. Jessica shared how to work on those feet. She uses a 30 or 40 blade and she works all the way around the pad. You're going to leave everything else as is, but get as close as you can to the pad. The next place to trim would be the face. Rachel's going to show us how she does it with her trimmer and a seven blade. You start at the eye line. You go right here. Okay. And you start right there and go down. And everybody's going to hold their clippers a little differently. Everybody's going to be a little different. I start like that and then you go into the face. Get the, get the, the whiskies. Let's get all the whiskers and the extra hair. I don't change the blade throughout unless they have a head that you need to leave hair places. Okay. But if you're doing like a normal cut, you just keep it on a longer blade and then you could fix anything with the shorter blade later. I go up from the eyebrows. Up from the eyebrows, okay. Because you want to get their indent. Oh, they have an indent here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay. Get all those nasty hairs under there because yep. if you keep if you leave them under there they can cause an infection and then you'll have a really nasty smell 
Oh, yeah. And then you won't be able to figure out where the smell is coming from, literally. <laughs> Until you realize that it's under there. Under there. And it's not anywhere else. So the line that goes from the edge of the eye to the edge of the ear. Okay. Ed, okay, so you're going from the corner, corner to corner. Corner okay. to corner. The ear set's supposed to be equal to the eye. Okay. Or lower. Yep. You go down the neck. You go down to like a, the chest bone right here. Okay. You don't want to go down too far. Because you'll take their hair off. And for cockers, you go right here at the end of the ear. You go down. Okay, go down. And you find the ear. The ear. And right around here mm -hmm. is where the neck one again starts. Okay. And you go down here. And you find the line. Find the line at the neck. And you okay. go down to almost meet the line down here. Okay. Because it's kind of going to come into like a U shape. Okay. Around the neck. And this you'll clean up with thinning shears. Okay. While we're on the head, let's talk about those cocker ears. Yeah, they're kind of a signature piece of this breed. Jessica is an artist and truly amazing to watch it work. So everybody grooms differently, but my line is at the top where the, where the flip of the ear is. Okay. She's got a line a little lower, but that's only because somebody groomed, groomed her, her lower. Yeah, lower. Okay. It's all about the semicircle, then inside to the flap, and then to the front. Just watch. You'll understand in a minute. Never go, Never under, go the under the flap. Stay above that Above thick. the flap. Okay. Semicircle underneath to keep it clean. And then the flap that turns in the front, you take that off, and you don't go any lower okay. than So you that flip it turn. over this way. Yep, and get all it, underneath it. And yep. then trim it down that way. And this is with a what I did this with a nine blade. Okay. I'm going to go do the boy over here. So you do the semi-circle. And you feel for where the feel flap the, is. Yep. You look like an artist doing that with your wrist. It oh, is, my God. It's an art. And you keep the line directly down from the eye all the way to the ear. Okay. So you have that line. You need the line. Oh, it's like a little haircut. I'm using the nine blade because he hasn't been trimmed in a while and I don't want to give him a clipper burn. What would you normally... You would, what 10 would, to 15. 10 to 15, okay. So then you just take your line and there's where this... See yep. where the yep. flop is. And then you have that. And see, okay. I've only groomed him, so you see, yeah, you have different lengths. Yep. And then I just go down a little bit from that so that it doesn't stick up and look like you know Lady of the Tramp. Or right. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Pull away, and I go. Once I do that, I take the line and I bring it into the face. Okay. And then you pull the lips back. And get all that flu hair. Yep. And then I go up here and get the front of the face. Okay. A lot of people forget the front of the face. Hey, you wanted all the mats. So then you get that clean look. Yep. I mean, it's a total difference. Subtle, but not subtle. Like, right. it's, yeah, it's an art. Doing two dogs definitely comes in handy because you get to see how the same techniques turn out on two completely different dogs with two completely different colors and coats. I also have a chance to show you how the different skill levels come into play. Jessica has been grooming Cocker Spaniels since she was like, oh, I don't know, five years old. She is at a point where she can confidently groom the head with trimmers. Now, Rachel, on the other hand, she's more of a shears and thinners kind of girl, kind of like me. Both will get you the same results, but it's all about your confidence level on which route you choose. Another phrase when it comes to Cocker Spaniels that you will hear on the regular, it's all about circles. I do it like this. A lot of people would not feel comfortable. <laughs> you have to be very confident this. doing that, you have yeah. To be confident and very lightly don't even barely touch the hair right just very very subtly going just over, go it. over it to get a little bit of thickness out 
like if you see like a little slow motion view. Yeah. And then you make it go around to match the ear line. Oh my god. So it's all circles. I always it's, tell people, yeah. just remember you're doing circles. Circle. I mean, no I, yeah. Lines. And from there, Jessica's going to show us how to work the chest. And then there's a bone right here that you stop about a finger and a half above the bone. Above the bone. You feel that? Oh, okay. Yeah. If you go below, you take the chest look out of the dog. Okay. You make them look straight. Look at that. Wow. Okay, so here is the shear and the thinning shears. So a beginner might start it this way. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say this, it takes your mom. She's a lot faster than Three I'm minutes. I'm fast because I'm not a beginner. Rachel's more of a beginner because I always take over. Yeah, or I do it and then she'll fix it up for me. She's not a beginner. She's no. a long time watcher. <laughs> I didn't say here. I was talking to her about the x -Pens. I'm like, oh, you're going to record a lot of my mom because she'll walk you through what to do. I can't tell you why I'm doing it. I just, she just know knows that, to do it. I just know I'm doing yeah. it and it right. took me years to know why I was doing why it. Why you were doing it. People would watch me and say, oh, I see you did this. I'm like, I did. Yeah. Well, you, I was right? just following what my mother did. Right. I'm like, I just did it. I don't know. I, I, well, I don't know do why. It. You know, but thanks for letting me you know. On that. Because now I understand now why. Now you understand why you're doing it. Like, they would tell me how I would do the feet or how I would brush a dog out. Right. And I was just doing it on just... Just me well, me muscle memory from, yeah. yeah, from doing it for how many years, yeah. Oh, wow. So then I clean that out. A baby fro. Just keep brushing it back as you're going. Okay. The back will be a lot shorter in the front. Cause it'll look like it's all one one hair you know she's got that big hat she right be trimmed in a while okay so you could take the the brush and brush everything to one side and just thin off the edges okay so yeah you yeah getting rid of those you're getting rid of the, the lines yeah and remember it's all circled i'm using a pair of curved thinners. <gasps> oh nice They're affordable grooming shears and i always go around because it's a, a, a it's a circle it's a circle right i'm going to repeat myself 50 times it's with fine that circle. it's a circle the whole breed is a circle it's a circle which i'm going to learn about every circle see on the breed. a lot of people mess up feed or whatever because they're so busy trying to get the Bevel. bevels which you can teach me what a bevel is right it's, a bevel. it's all a circle it's all a circle oh the bevel of the ah the bevel it's of the all foot circular if you do it right, you get the bevel. If you don't do it right, you're going to get a pointy foot. Yep. And you're going to show us how that. Yeah. And so my, I keep the the ridges on top. Okay. Because I tend to turn my shear. shear. Okay. And to the that's circle. How I yeah. get rid of the lines. This is unreal. Wow. Rachel's dog's a little harder because he's a puppy, but this is an adult who's already gotten through all the change the chain, right do dogs. and so you try but to you don't want to do it short throughout and you don't want to do it long throughout you don't want a long hair to come from here and go back there right you want it all to blend, blend in, in so that it doesn't stick up and that's a lot of cocker people they they do it the way I just told you not to. Right. And then the dog shakes and the hair goes. Oh, okay. And it all ends up like up here where hers won't. And as I keep grooming her, I'll keep working on that, but I'm not going to take it all at once. So then I could take this and brush it this way. And then, and then oh, just yeah. go over the long hairs that I might have left. Okay. Well, they okay. do that on human hair too. I mean, I've seen them okay. when they're laying, like when you, when you're layering, when you're getting a layered haircut. Yep. So then you keep the layer. I mean, it's all by eye for me, but if you just keep layering it, you'll get that look and you'll keep that look. Nice. And if you do it a little short before a big show, right? It'll come back beautifully. And you could just 
finish the. So maybe like trim it like a week before the show, week cut week it down. Two, yeah, two. and then it'll probably grow. two weeks two. if you're gonna cut it tight. Okay. You want these? So then the neckline, you you want to take all that bulk out. Mm-hmm. So you just want to get rid of that line from clippering. Yep. Blending it in. You could do it laying down, standing up, but at the end you want her to stand up so that you can see exactly. Right now I'm just getting rid of the bulk part. I got the hiccups. I see that. Okay, these ears are a little scraggly, a bit long. So I slick her all the way through because she's already been brushed out. Right. And you just take off the edges. Okay, and you're using your curved shears. In a circular one. In a circle. Yeah, there you go. There's another another circle. So then when she gets blown out, her ears will be really pretty and straight. Would you go over that with a thinning shear or would never. you just leave? Never. Okay. Never, never. No, leave why? Leave it to grow. Leave it to grow. Okay. All right. Somebody's mistake will be fixed. Judges don't really care. Okay. They're not going to see what we see. Right. See, all that should be here. So oh, it's missing all some, the hair. Okay. If they went under the under the under the thing. Okay, well, that's a perfect example as to why you not do that. And if I do his ear. Oh wow. Look at that. Yes, you're doing that. Oh wow. She's doing good. You taught her well. Yeah, he's got a cowlick too, right straight up. Yeah. Right. So that's not easy. No. So then you good see girl. I take this. Same thing. She didn't do it with the clipper, but I'll do it with the scissor and just get rid of that little hair. That okay, that little out. little doohickey. Yep. So then he doesn't have a scraggly because he's a puppy still. But you see, when I do this, okay, he's got all this hair. He's got it all there because, because I never went, went past that. past the the knobby thing. So there's how you perfect example. Her. And look at how much she's gotten off. And more of that circle. Yep. This is me blending with a pair of curved shears. And that says just how amazingly skilled you are. Because there's not a lot of people it's that can do that. It's not easy, and if you try it, you might cut a big hole in them. Take a yeah, I that, do a yeah. lot of the eyelashes with oh, the shears as well. Shite. But you saw me do the clippers. Yeah. So people yeah. are more apt to do with the clippers. With clippers, yep. If they know not to take the eyebrow off right or the eyes or the, eyes. <laughs> the entire eye oh yeah yeah there's that and while legal gets a break just as rachel predicted jessica is gonna pop over and finish up the thinning shear work on that sweet puppy's head you get to see clear as day that a lot of work goes into cleaning up the head with shears but even with a nasty little colic the results can be amazing see he's got lines okay yeah so you're gonna get rid of the lines the thinning shears. And he's licking my hand, appreciating it. My biggest issue is the top nuts. That's where I like the most. Yeah, but you did pretty good on this, except for the lines. And you're dealing with colics. Mm. And a puppy. And a puppy. I was say, you need to give yourself a little bit more credit there, girl. You're so cute. Look at big clusters. Yeah, she's my pretty teeth. Yay! <laughs> I was say, your mother's been doing this since... Be longer than you have been born yeah. to say that you've done this you need to give yourself a lot more credit so we've gone from the head to the chest to the ears and now we're on to the body that means we get to start stripping pull out those dollar bills peeps <laughs> i know not funny pull out those stripping knives so we're gonna start stripping it's been a while so i'm gonna start her with the course Stripping a dog is definitely a lengthy process. Don't plan on it being a quick job ever. But when done right, stripping and then finishing touches with your thinning shears can definitely make your dog look absolutely amazing. And you never go straight into the back. You always go down. Down, okay. And you take whatever you can get out of there without, don't hold it like this, hold it like this. Hold not, it. not like that, like hold that. It like on the side, okay. And then you pull it down that way. You can always pull up the skin to tighten where you're grooming. Go down enough that it all looks natural. That is crazy. Look at that. I mean, you just got, wow. And the shoulder, you don't want to go into 
you need a top line. Like a lot of sporting dogs, they have a break right here because every one of them has a muscle. Okay. But in cockers, they're not supposed to see the break. You're supposed to, it's all supposed to float into uh, the top line. Okay. That way I take the shoulder and pull it that way. You're pulling, that's why you're pulling it down. Okay. Yep. And you take some of this down so that they have that hourglass figure. So and looking down look on like it a, that way. Yeah. yeah. Cause you don't want them to look like a fat blob. No. They're supposed to be models. Models. <laughs> we call them. Sometimes they want to be runaway models. We don't like that. They don't like to eat sometimes. Oh, well, yeah. Cockers worry on the road and they take care of their... Wait, I wish I could do that. <laughs> and, you know, a cocker could be fat so quickly that you really? don't even realize it until you're going to groom. And then you're like, wow, where did all that come where, from? Where did all that extra oomph come from? It's not just your fluffy coat. Nope. Typical cocker. It's a worried yeah. metabolism. They pant a lot of it away, and which causes their teeth to get really gross and okay. full of crud. Right. So those dogs that are worried a lot right. have to get their teeth cleaned twice a year. Okay. Unless you scale you them scale all the time. scale them all the time, right. A lot of people don't scale. They just bring them to the vet every six months and, and get them done. done. So yeah, when they pant a lot, because they're worried. Right. That's what causes bad teeth. Okay. I'm gonna get that. Eating shit. Uh, well, eating shit will do that too. Yeah. yeah, they just don't brush their teeth very much after that. No, it's gross. It is gross. Panty too. Grooming is an art form. This exact topic has been discussed in other episodes with other breeds, so it is synonymous with the sport. You groom to the dog's virtues as well as its faults, and you have to understand. Many times we are finishing a dog while it is still growing. You hope that a judge understands this while they're still young and developing, but you need to groom to those faults, whether they will be evident in six months or not. They need to be groomed for the show on that day. So how long does it take to basically strip a dog down? Up, this is a long process because you want to get as much off as possible with the stripping knife before you have to take the finishing touches with the thinning shears. Okay. I don't care what anybody says. There's always finishing touches with thinning shears. Yeah. And you could hide faults. Yeah. By stripping what you need to strip and then doing the rest with thinning shears. It's amazing what you can do. Oh, yeah. On this breed. And dogs, these this breed in general, I, I know they go through a lot of changes when they're growing. Mm -hmm. like this right now. So he's 11 months old, and so his shoulder and hip bones are up so you this feel oh how high his hips are yeah and now feel how high his shoulder is when he finished, okay and yeah when go down his At back seven months old when he finished it feels would never feel that yeah okay he's a solid it'll he's come a back solid dog right but right now if he was going to a dog show she would have to try to hide it hide, hide all back. that so on the on the so on the go the shares come in yeah you can feel where the holes are, where it's going to fall back into place. Right, but he's a puppy, so... That's but he's gonna, he's a puppy going in and at this point... He's going through his... Going yeah. Through his. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand when they're grooming their own cocker, is that your dog is not the same all the time. All the time. And that's one thing that you really need to push. You're going to change. Throughout their puppyhood, they don't finish changing until they're almost three. Oh, wow. Okay. And most dogs are finished by three. Most of them are finished as puppies. And a lot of dogs start their But then they start then. specialing and they want a special early, but then these dogs go through changes and then they look like crap and they can't figure out why they're not winning. Because and they were so pretty because, as puppies. Right, right. So they just need to let them grow, grow up, up and mature. They go through a lot of stages. It's crazy. So after all that stripping and thinning and sculpting, now it's time to work on the tail. Shears are against the tail. Okay. Oh. Straight up. And get the poop area. Yeah. And then. Oh, you're brave. Pull off the sides. Trim the sides. And it's a circle. Pull off the sides. Trim. You never do it straight. Don't do it that way. Pull okay. Off the sides, so pull to the you, side. Then you get the hair that you need to get. So there we are with another circle. Look so then that. you just kind of straighten that tail out as 
always going to be cowlicks at the end of a tail. You don't want to go near the top at all. Okay. All right. That's I noticed that. It to it the side. Sides. Okay. Look at that cute little tail. So then, again, you can pull the hairs to the sides mm -hmm. and thinning shear so that you get the natural look. Okay. There you have it. Yep. Pull the hair. And from there, it's time to clean up that rumpity rump area. And then, of course, right onto the top line. So then I take the tail, move it to the side, and go down the hips a little. Okay. Yep. And pull it off that way. Yep. Some people strip only. Some people go underneath. I don't ever go underneath with thinners. Okay. It's like an old school thing to go underneath. But because I've already stripped, I'm... I'm not taking bulk. I'm just right. taking a little to make that hourglass. You're, well, you can here. see, I can see the difference right now. I mean, you're making this, again, more, like, I'm not going to call it a circle. I'll call it a curve. An hourglass figure. And this is, yeah, I mean, you can see the difference for sure. So, you get those lines out and good to go for the other side. So, at the end, your tail should be set right off the back. Okay. So if the hair bulks up like that, you mm -hmm. don't ever cut into it. You cut away from it. You pull it away and try to just move it around. So okay. It lays All right. Okay. Okay. I gotcha. Correctly. So if she had a low tail set, mm -hmm. at the end of this, I would take the scissor and trim it like this because we're a couple weeks before the show. Right. And then by the time the show comes, it's going to be grown out enough so that when the judge picks it up, it'll, it'll be lay hair. Yeah. So you can make your lines. See that there's a little bit of a long hairs there. Right. And I don't... The long hairs stick up so when they move, you'll have a, a shawl. Okay. You don't want to cut the shawl off, but you can very lightly thin the hairs in, in that area right and then they'll lay okay and they won't come up come up now it's time to clean up that neckline the thinning shears along with some patience is all you need to clean it up and give it that finishing touch that's just amazing so seriously your line. yeah i mean no there isn't your line right <laughs> and she has a little cowlick up here yeah so you can kind of see it right you don't want to cut it off no you want to just kind of work around it and then go down. Ultimately, it could disappear. Some breeds, some, not so much. Some people aren't that lucky. <laughs> so speaking of puppies, here's the dirt on stripping out that infamous puppy coat and how to condition them from the beginning. See all that right there? Yeah, all this is coat. all puppy. You can feel, you can feel, like I said, the difference. So with a puppy, would you see start stripping change? it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you the can definitely change. see it. You're pulling all that puppy crap out. So, if you were conditioning a puppy to go in, you know, for for show, yep. how often would you be grooming it, you want stripping to it? Try to get that puppy started young. Okay. If you are a handler and you got your dog from somebody who doesn't groom, right? You you want to do get as much hair off as possible right away. It doesn't matter if it's right or not. Okay. Get it. Off, get it off the dog. Strip the heck out of it, and then trim it the way you know it's supposed to look in a few weeks right and then you'll have that look when the show comes okay the type of coat that you're dealing with is going to help you determine which one of the stripping knives you're going to use so up here you want to get all that yeah as hard as you can get it down and again i'm using the coarse okay using coarse okay now if it was a dog that was already you were just doing already like a maintenance groom. Groomed, groomed. Touching up, you want the medium or fine, depending on how sharp that fine is. Okay. You don't want it to be really sharp. Okay. You want it to be a little dull. And I always push harder. Jack, you'll find there. Me. Okay. Why there? Because that's where the hip area is. That's where you want your top line to be a little sloping. Okay. And you want more hair off of this area than any other area on the body. Okay. When you get to the tail set. You have a little extra hair, so because a cocker spaniel, the tail set is supposed to come right off the back into a top line. Keep the so top when line. it's walking, when it's gating, the is tail the tail up? About here. 
Okay. All right. It could be here. It could be here. But okay. They want it here. Okay. And you're trying to make sure it's all out. You literally could see the lighter hairs. Yeah. Up. Yep. So then you just strip there. Okay. And again, I'm not getting him ready for a dog show. I'm getting him. You're conditioning him. Right. Out. Yep. But if I was showing him at the show, this would be the time to be doing all this so that in two weeks or whatever the show is next week. Okay. He'd be ready. The growth will be back some. Do you guys band the tops when they're when they're in natural coat or fluffy? We call them fluffy. No. Yeah. No, no we never band. The only time people will band butt hair, like if a bitch is in season, and okay, blood everywhere. Yeah. The dog lifts their leg a lot. They'll yeah, band try it. to band, 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 band that area. Try not to get it all full pee before the show. Right. Some people band them before they're breeding, but that's yeah. because you don't want to cut all that hair off underneath. Right. I prefer cutting it off. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure I make a big circle. Yeah, I was gonna say right around, right the, around her hair. Yeah. And so, at about the chest bone right here, I'll cut all the way to there. Oh, okay. Here, all the way to there. Have it done like that too. A lot of specials do because they're breeding and, and they're yeah, it keep, keeps them clean. It's it's a hygienic it's thing. It's you very know, hygienic. Yeah. Under there. Well, sure. Yeah, they have better movement. They could use their feet better. We had to take hair off of a dog just because he couldn't move. And while you're down there in the nether regions, it's time to work on the legs, where we're going to get to incorporate our final set of circles. Hang tight. So, I don't know. Do you trim all this stuff too? Yeah, I will trim that okay, too. Okay, that's okay. Because will that grow to the floor? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. You can actually hear it. Mm-hmm. And my finger's on the other side too. So, I'm going against my finger, mm -hmm. not for skin. The next part to tackle the feet yep the infamous cocker feet get out your pen and paper peeps all right so once you get a comb all the way through to the pads to the feet bottom mm -hmm. of the feet so her pads are clipped out already right so mainly you're just going to cut around where it's all overgrown right and you keep it straight so that you don't cut into the foot right so that's like the first. And again, it's another circle. Yes. So once it's all combed out, I take my hand down it and pull the hair in. Oh! I lay the scissor. And make the original I... circle. Oh, wow. And then comb it comb it out. And then do it again without, without pulling, it pulling it. Okay. And as you're going up, the angle of the scissor will change. So you're going more on a slant now yep. to get less of that blunt cut, I guess and what you call it. that's how you bevel. That's how you bevel it. Okay. Always remember, you go up and you change the angle as you're going up. So then to get the back, I always lift it up. Oh my god, what went? Oh, and that was. Oh! That was so cool. Those, get all those other edges off. You can see what you're talking about with the bevel. The minute yeah. you did this, yep. it was like, holy crap. And then as you go along, you just make everything match. Now, would you go over that with a thinning shear when you're done? You don't, no. That's, no. No. Extra work. She's got like excellent hair, so getting a bevel on her to stay perfect is not always going to be an easy. Okay. Wow. I always say my comb is my best friend because it helps control the hair and you can pull it out of the way real quick. It's in the 70s now. It feels great out oh, here. It's gorgeous out. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Okay, and you're going to go around the inside as well. You just finish the circle on the inside. And you're not going to get it perfect the first time. You're just going to keep working on it. But you don't want to take too much off, and then you can't you fix can't, that. Yeah, you can't grow it back a little overnight. off and then fix it. 
That is unreal. Wow. Yeah. And then to get the bevel in the back of the front leg, you just gotta tip, yeah. Move the dog around a little bit. Because you can't really keep lifting the foot because it's always gonna be different when you put it down. Right. Just kind of tilt A it. lot of people forget the back here, which causes the dog to look low or, okay. or down on their pastor. Yeah, you need to get it back, yep. So she's got really straight hair going into this area. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take a thinning chair, you could. Or you could pull the hair out with the comb like that. Mm -hmm. And just get your pieces that are causing it to look like right. you did it. But it's really the hair. The hair. And you could tip the edges. I call it dog art. Yeah, that's perfect. It's not as easy as people think. No, it's not. And people tell me all the time, you make that look so you, easy. You do. I could. So here's the length. Go straight in. Okay. Pull your comb out and just make your line. Okay. Okay. I see it. So are you lining this up with... I mean, I'm saying from the top of this. Right. Okay, so you're lining it up that way. All right. You want it to look feathery, you know? Mm-hmm. So, is your head spinning? I know mine was. Mind totally blown. But she's not done. Now it's time to go onto the back feet. My hand goes under the hock area. The okay, let me go under the knee. Okay. And I grab the hock. Okay. okay. So all that's all clipped out. Right. Now you just trim around trim it. around it. Okay. And the, the top of the hock right here. Uh-huh. So again, you're just grabbing right at the hock. And you just try to start your circles. And you keep combing and keep looking to make sure that you... Are getting the circle you want, the size that you want. And then I take this hair mm -hmm. and I pull it in and I make that circle like I did in the front. Uh, in the front. Okay, same exact thing. All right. So now you have your leg hair that is starting to look like a foot. Yep. Look at that. Dang. Pick it up. Yeah. See the foot. And then Over there's the inside. Into there. Yep. Wow. Okay. So now you got to show the angle on the dog. Okay. So I always comb the butt hair in. And then you want to show that they, you know, that's their foot. Right. So then you comb all the way through. Always remember the comb all the way through. Comb, oh yeah. And I always move the foot with my hand so that I can get through to the whole circle. The whole circle. Okay. okay, so now the hack. You see where that line is and you want to match everything. You start underneath. And then you turn that's this where you turn your yeah. you turn your shear. I see as it. As you go up. Wow. So now when you look, you have the you can, well you can see the outline. I mean the you can, outline yeah. and the curves. And then you could just keep so that it's not too long. You right. want to make sure that the back leg is as trimmed as the front leg. And the angle of the scissor is really what makes it look the best at the end like you have to angle the you scissor to, as yeah. you're going and every dog's hair is going to be different so you can't do them all the same you have to re remember that they it's a custom sculpt basically yes, each one of them is different you can get a cocker to look like a cocker but the final show look is going to be different on each of them
So Oops. if you can get under here, you'll see the hairs on the other side. Yep. This is the trimmed hair, and then on and the, other the other side, side is yeah. how long it is. Yep. So then when you get on the other side, you just kind of trim to make it to match make it the match. first side. Okay, yep. I'm going to go under and start it so that I know where it is. So when I get over there, it's already started It's already for me. started. See, the angle on the hawk helps with the angle that you want on the yeah. back, okay? So if you have a lot of angle, like a sickle hawk, you want it to be shorter. Okay. If you're more straight hawked, I mean, if you're straight in the angle, you want the hawk to be longer. And then you could fill it with like a, a thickening spray or whatever uh -huh. and like have it so it comes out here and then you get this big angle that you want to see on the dog uh, okay so, so that, if they're yeah. straighter and they don't have this then right. you have to do that but she is very nicely angled yeah she is she's not sickle hawk so she doesn't have to have a shorter or a longer it's actually harder because it's so the hair is so straight and and good that right. you'll see a lot of lines if you don't just keep trimming keep doing here it, yeah. and there. We didn't finish here. Of course, you know I grabbed more. So be on the lookout for future short snippets of tidbits on grooming and even showing a Cocker Spaniel. Until next time! You sweet, you sweet girl. Oh, there we go. Clean it in the ears. Oh, you have to. <laughs> oh, there we her go. Whole butt. There we go. There.